He was the true father of Jackson's Democratic Party, having organized it in the 1820s. And he was Andrew Jackson's hand-picked heir in 1836. This endorsement gave him the election. Number eight, Martin Van Buren, Democrat, 1837 to 1841. Age, 54, from New York. Van Buren was the ultimate political protege and the ultimate political machine politician. The skills he had as kind of a backroom political organizer were great at making him a builder of a political party, but did not serve him so well in terms of, of actually leading the nation uh, as president. Van Buren loved the good life. And I think, in a way, that he wanted to treat the White House as a kind of reward for a lifetime of hard work. Unfortunately, history didn't cooperate. He got branded with a reputation that was almost entirely undeserved, and that is he got the reputation of being somebody who was a kind of wannabe aristocrat and was decorating the White House with gold-edged faucets and, and golden goblets and things, none of which was true. But Van Buren uh, conducted himself in such ways that it seemed like it might be true. He's seen as a man who is characterized, at least anyway, by his enemies, as an effete dandy. A man who uh, perfumes his whiskers and who wears a corset. It's not the kind of image which is really going to work very well in the rough and tumble world of American politics of the 1830s and the 1840s. When Van Buren took the oath, he certainly inherited the high hopes of Jackson's presidency. But he also inherited the financial ruins of Jackson's bank war. No sooner is he inaugurated than the Panic of 1837 begins. Van Buren got socked right off the bat with having to respond to an enormous crisis of, of unemployment, of uh, bankruptcy, of, of economic depression in all its ways. And it gets progressively worse um, as time goes on. In fact, there's another panic in 1839. The one in 1839 was even worse. It was caused fundamentally by a glut in the cotton market. And of course, cotton production was the backbone of the American economy. So when the price of cotton collapsed, uh, the American economy collapsed. No president had ever had to deal with anything like this before. I don't know that any president would have been up to the job, but uh, Van Buren certainly wasn't. As a man who had spent his entire career straddling the fence on issues, Van Buren was incapable of making tough decisions, such as the annexation of Texas. He ducked that question, fearing it would inflame the brewing slavery issue. As for the ailing economy, he had no real plan. By the time 1840 rolled around, the country was in such a deep depression that it would have been obvious to all observers that Van Buren was bound to lose, that the Whigs could have run anybody and beaten Van Buren. And if they had known that, the Whigs would have run Clay. But instead of nominating Henry Clay for president, the new Whig party chose William Henry Harrison because they believed he was the candidate who most resembled Andrew Jackson. Harrison had been a frontier general and an Indian fighter. But more importantly, he supported the rechartering of the Bank of the United States. 